Why are you still here? Why are you still alive? And does it really matter that you're still breathing today? Why did God make you? Why did God purpose you? On the surface, as believers, we say we don't believe in evolution, but evolution, theology, and mindset still creeps into our hearts if we're not If we're not, um, what's the word? Guarded, but if we're not vigilant against it. The enemy wants us to believe that we're just here to live another day and life's not really meaningful. We're not satisfied. One day you'll retire and life will get good. All those things are rooted in this evolution mindset that says you just came from cosmic soup, from goo, you just happened to evolve over billions and billions of years, that is a lie that robs us of our intention, our purpose, our focus, our vision. We need revival in the house of God. We don't need more stuff We don't need a new position. We don't need a new title. We need to be revived in our spirit. Our spirit man, our spirit woman is yearning to achieve the reason for which we were created. There's a passion inside of you that has been in you since you've been a little girl, a little boy. There's something inside of you that's screaming to be accomplished, to get out, to be done. And I'm here to tell you, you have not achieved it yet. You have not accomplished the thing for which you are still breathing today. You may have great accomplishments from your past. You may have great financial success. You may have great athletic success, educational, family, marriage, all these things. You may look back and go, man, I've got a great thing behind me. But there is a greater thing in front of you, and it may just show up at 3 p.m. today. It may just show up at 11.59 tonight. But there is a purpose for why you're still breathing. We are in the last days. We are approaching the return of Jesus Christ. The return of Christ is very near. The return of the king, the creator of the universe, is right around the corner. There is a reason why God still has you here. And over the last couple of weeks, God has just impressed upon me that it is time to shake the church. It is not time for me to make you feel good to give you seven steps to successful living, seven steps to a better marriage, seven steps to great financial security. Those are not the shaking that we need. The shaking that we need is this reality that we will stand before judgment very soon. Many of us have this statement, oh, I wish Jesus would return today. But here's the concern to that. We say that because we view the world a wreck, but are we really ready to stand before judgment? Are you ready to give account today for how you've lived your life, for the investment that God put in you? The reason I'm I'm on this, this stream of you are created is because if you evolved, you have no real reason, meaning, purpose for being here. It's just sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and I'll get what I can, and life will just be, I'll be what I make of it. That is, that is an evolution mindset. A biblical creation mindset is God purposed me. I'm not a biological happenstance. I'm not just the creation of my mom and dad. I'm not an accident, even though daddy said I was, mama said I was, everybody says I'm, I was out, out of wedlock, I wouldn't split. The, those are all lies from the enemy. God is the giver. God is the taker of life. God birthed you for a reason. 
that reason has not been achieved yet. If your purpose had been achieved, you would already have breathed your last. God would have said, well done, good and faithful. Thank you for taking the investment that I put in you and it giving me a return, achieving the purpose. Are you with me? God put something inside of you. He has put an investment in you. He has put greatness in you. It's not you that's great. It's him that's in you that's great. Are you with me? The world will say you are great. No, no, no. God is great. We're just the tools of his greatness. There is something inside of you that God says, I need you in the last days. I don't need you to store up more wealth. I don't need you to achieve more on the field or the court. I don't need you to achieve more on Wall Street or more, you know, in whatever realm of this world that's called success. I need you to achieve the purpose for which I created you. That purpose could just be the simple interaction with you on aisle three at the HEB with the guy in his cart and you bump carts and and that turns into a conversation which turns into a prayer or which turns into a $5 bill or which turns into a word of encouragement, which turns into you achieving the purpose for which God created you. But if we live this life thinking that we've already achieved it, we've already done it, now it's just time to retire, now it's time to just have fun, it's my time now, I've been, I've been harnessed my whole life, it's all about me now. If we have these mindsets of evolution, then we'll miss the reason for our purpose. There is a shaking that's happening. God is shaking the foundations on which we trust. And I pray you get shook. I pray that everything that you put your trust in other than Jesus Christ falls apart. I I truly pray that. Why? Because I'm mean? Because I don't like you? No, no, no. Because I desire for us to chase nothing else than that which is eternal. I do not care how much money you make, how many awards you've got, how many albums you sold, how popular you were, who loved your music, who loved your face, who loved your business. I don't care about any of that. I care, did you achieve the purpose for which God gave you the talent? To one man, he gave five talents. To one man, he gave two talents. To another man, he gave one talent. I don't care if you're one talent, two talent, five talent investment. Achieve the purpose because there is a shaking and a judgment coming. If we stand before holy God today, Can Cameron truly say, God, whoo, I preached it. Boy, I grew that church for you. I preached it. God's going to say, I don't care about that stuff. Did, Did you forgive that guy that flipped you off on the road? Or did you just wish that your friend Willie would arrest him and throw him away forever? Hey, Cameron, did you make peace with that person that offended you? Or did you just harden your heart and then call it good because you're such a great guy over here for me? Because you're a preacher. What's the reason for our creation? Are you with me? Matthew chapter 25 is broken up into three basic stories. And all three stories have a string to them in brilliant Jesus fashion. The first in Matthew 25, it starts with the parable of 10 virgins. And these 10 virgins are waiting for their husband, waiting for the bridegroom. They're waiting for the return of Christ. The 10 virgins here represent a person that's been made new, that is engaged to the bridegroom. Listen, the church, when you got saved, you didn't get saved, you got engaged to your lover. You got engaged to the groom. Are you with me? We, the church, are the bridegroom. We're the bride. He is the groom. We are waiting for our lover to come and rescue us from this place. Are you with me? That's the parable of the, of the ten virgins. They, they have ten ladies who are waiting for the groom to come and 
whisk them away into marital bliss. Are you with me? But all 10 go to sleep and are not vigilant. Let's go there. Matthew chapter 25. Just look at verse 5. Matthew 25, verse 5. Let me just read the first four. The kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins. I'm sorry, Daniel. Here we go. The kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now, five of them, say five. This, th- these are believers. Five of them were wise. What percentage of that is? 50%. Uh-oh, okay. Then, then 50% of the people listening to me right now will really take this to heart. Now, five of them were wise and five were foolish. Do you know what the Bible says about the fool? The fool is one who believes there is no God. Do you know that there's people in the church that don't believe there's really a God? Oh, oh, they believe intellectually. But they don't believe enough to trust. They don't believe enough to tithe. They don't believe enough to to submit. They don't believe enough to, to trust God when they can't trace God. They don't believe enough to be healed. They don't believe enough that he's their counselor, so they're paying big bucks for everybody else's advice. Are you with me? Now, five of them were wise and five were foolish. Now, those who were foolish took their lamps with no oil. That means no Holy Spirit, Lynn. Do you know that half the church loves religion, but they don't want the Spirit? Why? Because if you walk with the Spirit, the Spirit will put out your flesh. And you know why Cameron doesn't want to walk with the Spirit? Because Cameron loves his flesh. I do. Are are you with me? Come on, say amen. Amen. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. You just got to parallel this and you got to skip over on your own time to verses 31 through 46 where where they say, oh, we preached in your name. Man, I cast out devils in your name. Yeah, but you didn't have my spirit with you, man. You just did some good religious stuff. Thank you for starting that orphanage in your name. Thank you for feeding the homeless in your name. Thank you for putting money in the plate in your name. But did you do it in my name by the leading of my Holy Spirit? No, you didn't because you don't really want what I got for you. You just want to achieve the purpose you want for your life. Do you really want to lay down your life? Do you really want to pick up my cross? Cameron does not. Cameron likes Cameron's life. But when Cameron's life gets shook, guess who starts questioning, is there really a God? God, are you kidding me? If you're really there, then why is this falling apart? Well, Cameron, I didn't build that. Cameron, that part's over, but you won't let it go. Are you with me? Are you, is, is it resonating? Yes. Listen, now five of them were wise. Oh, God, help me to be wise. Just say that, God, I need wisdom. And five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps but took no oil, but the wise took oil in their vessels Five, let the Holy Spirit in. Are you with me? But all 10, look at verse five. The whole church, the whole world, while the bridegroom was delayed, while Jesus hasn't returned yet. Oh, we've been preaching he's coming back since the 50s. My grandpa preached it. His grandpa preached it. His preachers, preachers, preachers preached it. And while Jesus was delayed on his return, oh, preacher, 
He ain't coming back, man. I, I, dude, I haven't even retired yet. I haven't, I haven't got the new car yet. I, I haven't even, no, no, I haven't partied. Listen, in high school, I would say things like this. I'll get right with Jesus after Friday night's party. Me and Willie got big plans Friday night, baby Richard. Mm -mm. I'll get right with Jesus Saturday. He's not returning before Friday. I'll get right with Jesus in college. It'll be a lot easier to follow Jesus in college than high school. That's what I believed. It'll be a whole lot easier to get after college, then I'll follow Jesus. I'll get married, then I'll follow. Listen, after he's not really, listen to verse five, but while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. Just admit you have slumbered and you have slept. Just admit it. They all slumbered and slept. How many disciples in the garden of Gethsemane slept while Jesus prayed? And he went and he shook he said, could you not pray with me just one hour? I need you. Just one hour, Peter. Just one hour, Matthew. Just one hour. But they all slept. Just say out loud, I have slept and I haven't really believed Jesus is coming back because if I really believed, I would have a vision for that. And if I had a vision for that, then that movie that I spent $24 at watching for two and a half hours that was full of sex, full of drugs, full of rock and roll, full of violence. If I really believed Jesus was returning, I would have vision for his return and my vision would not want that vision that's coming through that screen. But since I don't really believe it, I'm sleeping through that movie. But I'm wide awake, consuming it all. It is robbing us If I really believed he's returning, I'll call and make it right. I'll make the phone call. I'll get in my car and drive to Houston, to New York City. If I really believed he's coming back, I would sell all I have, give it to the poor. And follow him. The problem is we don't really believe. Because if we did, we would live so different. Five were foolish. Psalms 14, 1 says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. There's no God coming back today. I mean, he's not coming back today. We're leaving for Vegas in two hours, baby. It's the Sin City. Woo, bring it on. Really? He's not coming back today. Man, tomorrow I got to check my stocks, man. I got to make sure I'm secure, baby. I got security. Jesus ends this parable, follows it up with the parable of the talents. Hey, Cameron, I've given you five, two, or one talent. What are you doing with it? Are you a five-talent businessman? Are you a two-talent mom? It doesn't, there's no, there's no, oh, you're a lower, no, no. Are you a one, how, what has God given you? Tiger Wood has one talent and he used it to rule the world of golf. Are you with me? He didn't need five talents. He's not the world's greatest bowler, the great, world's greatest football. No, no, no. He just got one talent that's to hit a ball better than anybody else on planet Earth and to rule the world of golf. He's a one talent guy and he used it to the best of his ability. Are you with me? Yeah. Are you one, two, or five? I don't know. It doesn't matter. But are you playing that instrument for the glory of God? 
because you're going to stand in front of him and he's going to say, did you take the investment I gave you? Did you build my kingdom or did you just play rock and roll? God. Cameron, I didn't give you billions. But do you realize over the course of your life, you, you've made a lot of money. What'd you do with it? <laughs> Man, we enjoyed life like you wanted, you wanted us to be blessed and happy, right, Jesus? I wanted you to be blessed. I wanted you to be happy, but I wanted you to put your treasure in heaven and not store up stuff on earth that moth and rust and a thief could destroy or steal. Because you know what, Cameron? I didn't give it to you. I gave it to you to give to others. See, your talent may be your family. All right. How many is in your family? One, two, five, eight? Oh, well, we're going to leave some of them behind, God. Oh, so, so that it's okay to, no, 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 you're held accountable. Are you with me? See, he follows up this message to the church with uh, verse 19, Matthew 25, 19. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts. Just say, God's coming to settle an account. After a long time, verse 5, but while the bridegroom was delayed. Oh, uh, chapter 24 says, while the, while the master was away, the servant didn't think he was coming back, so he started beating the slaves, started ruling his kingdom. Oh, yeah, there's a theme. Yeah, I know. Oh, 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 and then the judgment of the When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on his throne and all nations will be gathered to him. On the right will be the sheep and on the left will be the goat. Then the king will say to Cameron, then the king will say to Whitestone Church, then the king will say to you, yeah, but man, I've been hearing all my life Jesus is coming back. Yeah, you have. And he hasn't yet, but he will. Yeah, but I'm not Billy Graham. Yeah, he didn't give you that talent. Billy Graham was a one-talent guy. Do you know that? He wasn't a five-talent guy. He was one simple preacher. That's all that says on his tombstone, preacher. It didn't say businessman, preacher. No, he wasn't a two-talent guy. He wasn't a businessman and a preacher. He wasn't a five-talent guy. One talent. Don't tell me, I just got one talent. I ain't that talented. I'm not in demand. Yeah, you are. You may be birthed. You may live in Austin, Texas to lead one person to the Lord. God did not give that one person to the two-talent preacher or the five-talent missionary. He gave that one talent to you so that you would invest that one talent, that one intersection of life for that one person. That may be the extent of your existence. And if you miss that intersection because it's inconvenient, if you miss that intersection because you're slumbering and asleep, if you miss that intersection because you got religion but you ain't got Jesus, if you miss that intersection... You will be held accountable for that. God's not just winking, oh, it's okay. I'm a God of grace. He's a God of justice too. And what he gives you, he demands a return. If he invests in you, do not be the wicked servant that says, I buried your treasure. Because it was stinking inconvenient for me to forgive that person. You know the talent that God gave a missionary friend of Stacy and I's? He gave this person the talent to simply love those that cursed them. 
they're really not that great at what they do, but they just love everybody. And because they just love everybody, everybody feels safe around them. That's their talent. So when people offend them, you and I would walk away offended. This person just loves on them because it just went right over their head. They didn't even get the insult. Didn't even register. Are, are you with me? The last half, he says, Cameron, then the king will say to those on his right hand, come you, blessed of the father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world because when I was hungry, you gave me some food. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. Do you realize that's not about food and water only? Well, let's go feed the homeless. Okay, maybe that's you will not be fulfilled. Go preach in your own pulpit and give bread from your own supply. Are you with me? Water, drink. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. That is not just what we imagine it to be. Then the righteous ones will say, when did we see you hungry? When did we see you thirsty? When were you a stranger? When, As you did for the least of these, you did it to me. Please do not miss your purpose. The greatest revival the world has ever seen is already happening. And it does not have to do with one guy preaching great sermons in a coliseum full of a thousand or a hundred thousand people. We're not seeing UT Stadium rented out and Billy Graham standing in the middle of it preaching to a hundred. That's not the revival that's coming. The revival that's coming is God's church getting on fire. All of us lighting our lamps with the oil of the Holy Spirit. And we're spreading revival from one house to the next house, from one cubicle at work to the next cubicle, from one Facebook post to the next Facebook post. The revival that's coming has millions of preachers not centered around one popular voice any longer. That's not the revival that's coming. The revival that, the, or the revival that's here, the revival that's here is God reviving the vision inside of you. He's saying, I've given you a vision. Don't waste it for the vision of this world. Are you with me? Let's stand and pray. The year is 5781. We're in the Jewish Hebrew year. It is the year of the mouths open in silence, the jaw dropping year. God is shaking people, He is showing you things. I have to read this, Matthew 11. John the Baptist, the greatest preacher that ever walked the planet, found himself in prison. He didn't realize it, but all he did was he preached the word that God gave him. And the word, when he preached the word that God gave him, he got thrown in jail. And about 24 hours later, he's about to get his head cut off. And while he's in prison, he starts to doubt. He starts to slumber. He starts to let the oil out of his lamp. Are you with me? But listen to this. John basically sends his disciples and says, go ask Jesus one question. His disciples are, what do you want us to ask him, John? Just ask him, is he really the Messiah? Is he really the chosen one? Because I'm in stinking prison for it. This is Jesus' response. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said, are you the coming one or do we look for another? And Jesus says, go and tell John. Revive John. Remind him of his vision. 
remind him of his purpose, remind him of his calling, remind him of the dream that's been in him since he was a baby. Go tell Whitestone Church, go tell Cameron, go tell, and you put your name in the scripture, go tell. You need to be reminded, you need to be revived. Go and remind John, the world's greatest preacher, go remind John the things that you hear and see. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, the poor have the gospel, and blessed is he, blessed is John, blessed is Cameron, blessed is Whitestone Church, who's not offended because of me. Listen, church, the blind receive their sight. How do you think you came to Jesus? The alcoholic is now sober. The wife beater is now a lover. The cheater is now faithful. The liar is now filled with truth. The doubter, the double-minded, the schizophrenic, the bipolar, the manic is now single-focused and calm. The dead are raised. You were so dead in your dead-end life. Go remind them, revive them, give them vision again. I'm reminding you that you are on purpose, you have vision, and you will stand before judgment. Eradicate that which is robbing you of your life. Get your vision back. Sever relationships that are unholy. Sever them sever them remove entertainment that is perverted simple as that get it out of your house get it off the screen let go of things tangible things let go of things that you filled your life with and that you find security find security in the Lord Forgive those who have molested you, who have abandoned you, who've abused you. Forgive them. That is hard. Forgive them. Don't miss the talent. Maybe the talent that God gave you is the ability to forgive. We, we so chalked it up to things that we do. There are people who have the ability to forgive those who have violated them in ways that are indescribable. Some of you are a five talent person in that area because it's been five things that have been horrendous. Worship with your talent worship well I'm not good enough to be on stage I don't care about worship maybe God gave you the talent of worship but you only worship to yourself in your car but only God wants to hear your voice he didn't design you for others to hear it he says I just want you to sing to me well I can't sing he didn't ask you he just says I designed you to worship He didn't ask you to be Pastor Stacy. He just said, worship me. Write me. Draw for me. Work for me. Use that thing that God's given you. When we stand before God, let it be said of you. Well done good and faithful well done good and faithful how you handled the small thing how you handled the little now enter into the reward of much now enter into the reward of really handling that thing with value Richard and Christy God's hand is so powerful on you God is reminding you that he redeemed you And you have value. You have great value. 
some of the greatest things we value, we hide the most and nobody sees them. God sees you. Father God, I pray for an anointing on this place right now. Just, if you want to be anointed, you just put your hands up. God, I pray that you anoint the tongues. I pray that you anoint the hands. God, I thank you for my worshiper, Ken. I thank you for my worker, servant, John. I thank you for my worshiper, JR. God, I thank you that your hand is on us. I thank you for Katie. God, I thank you for that she's a healer, God. That gentleness flows through her and, and heals people, God. I thank you for my worshiper. I thank you for my business minds. I thank you for my, my, my enforcers, God, of your kingdom law. I thank you for my hospitality lovers of people just to serve them. God, I thank you for those of us that are in the shadows. God, I thank you for those of us that are in the limelight. God, I thank you for those of us that the world says is great. And I thank you for the ones of us that the world says they're nothing. God, I thank you that some of us you've got hidden. Some of us you've got exposed. God, I thank you that some of us you've got on the mansion on the hill. And some of us you got on that side of the tracks. God, I thank you for whatever talent for whatever position. God, I pray that we would not be fools that say there is no God today. That God, we would get right with you and be ready for judgment. So God, anoint this church. Anoint the husbands to love the wives. Anoint the children to obey the parents. Anoint your church for revival in Jesus name and everybody said amen. amen God bless you have a great day thank you